Hi everyone. So I own two Newtonian scopes. I've got a budget 130 PDS by Skywatcher and I've got a not so budget premium ultra Newtonian scope by Orion Optics UK, the CT10. They're both the same design but they're very different in a lot of ways. One's a lot bigger than the other and also a lot more expensive. But I wanted to see how they would compare on the same image. So let's see how they do. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. Hi everyone, so today I'm going to do a shootout between my two Newtonian scopes. One being a budget scope and the other one being a premium scope. When I bought my budget scope it was £179 new. Now they have jumped up in price, uh, the Skywatcher 130 PDS. I know they're about £229 now but that's still a really good price for that scope. Your bang for buck there is amazing. The CT10 that I bought from Orion Optics UK is a little bit special but it also came with a big price tag, uh, £2,000. Now, it's a carbon fibre design, uh, but it, more importantly, it's got a fantastic mirror inside. It came with a guaranteed minimum of a 1 tenth PV mirror. I actually ended up with a 1 twelfth PV mirror. Comes with a Zygo analysis report, so you know exactly what you've bought. I must be honest, that since using the CT10, I've noticed so much more contrast in the pictures. I think the light is being directed, you know, uh, straight where it needs to be. There's no stray light or reflections or anything. Now that could be down to some of the design features. I've noticed that all the mirrors have got black around the edges. There's no uh, reflective surfaces or silver inside the scope whatsoever. Everything is matte black. On the Skywatcher, the focus tube is silver, the outside of the mirrors are not painted. So these are things that I could actually do to see if I could improve the uh, Skywatcher even further. I've got a video with a load of mods that I've already done and they've improved that scope quite a bit. So maybe I'll do these other bits as well. I know people flock the inside of their uh, Newtonian and definitely do things like paint the edge of the mirror, get rid of any reflective surfaces. So I'm going to do these things and see whether or not it improves the contrast on the 130. It'll be a good experiment. But before then, I'm going to do a shootout between the two scopes. So first of all, let's show you the 130 PDS. So the Skywatcher 130 PDS, uh, absolute great value scope. Uh, we got a focal length of 650 millimeters at f5. Um, I'll be using, as I said, the MPCC Mark III Coma Corrector by Bader in this. Um, I'm going to be guiding this with a 240 millimeter guide scope, and it will have the uh, ZWO 120mm guide camera in it. Fitted to the 130 PDS is a ZWO electronic automatic focuser. Absolute brilliant scope. But in the other corner, we've got the Orion Optics CT10. The CT10 Ultra Newtonian scope is made of carbon fiber. Um, it's a lovely scope, but boy, is it a big one. Um, it's got a 1200mm focal length at f4.8, so nice and fast. Because of the extra focal length, I will not be using a guide scope. I'll be using my ZWO off-axis guider, so it will be guiding at 1200mm focal length. The guide camera I use in this is a 290mm by ZWO. It's a slightly more sensitive camera than the 120 and gives good results on an off-axis guider. Like the 130 PDS, I have also fitted a ZWO 
uh, electronic automatic focuser to the CT10. So all the focusing is being controlled by Nina. Newtonians are definitely my favourite kind of scopes. I know some people don't like all the fussiness with new collimation and dealing with uh, windy situations, etc. But I actually really like a Newtonian, and I think what you get back from one of them is an amazing uh, quality. Um, the light gathering capability and everything else about them is superb. Colour correction is great, you're never going to have problems with chromatic aberration with a Newtonian and the only thing you can suffer with is a bit of coma on the edges of your field of view. But you can buy coma correctors and they're not overly expensive. So for this experiment I bought or I already had a Beda MPCC coma corrector, the Mark III. I think they're about £130 new. I use it all the time on the 130 PDS because if I don't use a coma corrector I do get egg shaped stars on the edges of the field of view. I've actually found with the CT10 it doesn't require a coma corrector. Um, and I've, I've taken a few images with it and uh, there's not been any uh, coma at all. Uh, it's fantastic. But for the purposes of this experiment, I used the MPCC in both scopes so that the optics were the same. So there was no disadvantage for either scope. So onto the target I decided to photograph, um, Merlot 15, which is also the heart of the heart nebula. Um, I'd already taken a few subs of this with the 130 PDS. It was an image that I wanted to do and I've been wanting to do for a little while. So I'd actually started with that. So I continued on with that and I actually managed to get about 13 hours of data, um, narrowband data with the 130 PDS. I then got the CT10 on the same target. I only actually managed to get about seven to eight hours on that. Um, but that's okay. I, I felt that the CT10 maybe needed a little bit of a handicap um, because uh, it uh, was faster um, and was collecting more light than the 130 PDS. Um, so that's what I've got data wise. I've put the data into PixInsight and what I tried to do was make sure I edited both of the data sets as closely the same as possible so that we get a really good comparison. So after running both of the uh, data sets through PixInsight, I ended up in uh, Photoshop just so that I could get um, the same field of view for both images. This is the 130 PDS and I'm really happy with this, I mean I think the detail on this is fantastic. I'm just going to click up now what the CT10 did. Now, I gave both the same processing but I actually found the contrast on the CT10 to be greater and it made the editing a little bit easier. Um, the colours seemed to come out more like I was after but not that I'm not happy with the 130 PDS. The biggest difference I see between the images is the stars for starters are much more tighter 
and uh, Nita in the CT10. They seem a little bit uh, overblown on the 130 in comparison. Otherwise, I wouldn't be unhappy with this at all. Also, if I look in these regions here, the dark region down the bottom, you'll see on the CT10, there's a lot more detail coming through. I've tried my best to get as much detail out of the 130 as possible, but I think the detail levels are great, but when I compare it to what came out of the CT10, you can see there that extra contrast really does lend itself to giving more of that darker detail. And that also comes across in the fainter nebulosity areas. Um, again, on the CT, on the uh, 130, you'll see here it, it, it's kind of very faint and patchy. And on the CT10, there's a lot more information there. So I'm not unhappy with uh, the 130 at all. And I think on the main structure, the, the uh, detail level is fantastic. Um, and a 130 PDS for me, especially for the money, does an absolutely fantastic job. But if I bring the CT10's image up, there's just something about this that I prefer. It, it seems to have a more 3D feel about it. I, I much prefer the colouring that came out naturally. Um, it was a lot less work, to be honest. Uh, with the 130, I had to do a lot more work with it. Not but I'm not unhappy with it. I think both images are great, but um, a great relief to me, considering I've spent a fair bit of money on the CT10, is I think it has given a big improvement. So, um, but uh, maybe not as big a jump as you think, but like anything in this hobby, and with a lot of hobbies, um, improvements are diminishing. So you get to a point where you have to spend a lot of money or make a lot of changes uh, just to get a very small improvement. But I'm happy to say that I think there is an improvement there. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really pleased I did this comparison. Um, I think both of the final images are really good. Um, I'm really happy with them both. I hope uh, you've enjoyed looking at this comparison. And I'm going to put the final two uh, full images up now for you to have a look at. And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope it's inspired you to maybe have a go with a Newtonian. A lot of people don't like them. I think they're great. So that was the final results between the two scopes. I hope you found that of interest. Um, let me know what you think about the two images. Tell me which one you prefer. Maybe you prefer the 130 PDS, maybe you don't. Both are brilliant scopes. Advantages of the 130 over the CT10? Sure, it's portable. CT10 is definitely not a portable scope. The 130 is gonna be less affected by wind but then I do have my CT10 in an observatory, so wind really isn't a massive factor for me. Biggest advantage of the 130 PDS is accessibility. It's, a, it's, it's in the price bracket that most people can reach to. It's not gonna break the bank. So yeah, they're both absolutely brilliant scopes. I'm really happy that I own them both, and um, yeah, I, 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 I would highly recommend either. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, and until next time, please take care, and I'd like to wish you all clear skies.